You welcome back. Well, ahead of that uh, meeting, and we know how the financial institutions uh, they gained uh, f following the GDP numbers that we saw for the second quarter. So obviously, they do have a role to play in economic development. But one thing that uh, is like in the news, uh, the economic news these days in Nigeria is gas. And good enough, the president has, for the first time in the history of the country, created a sub ministry, there's a minister of state, Mr. Ikwerepe is the minister of state for gas in Nigeria. We haven't had that before, so we expect more focus, especially at a time when petrol has become really expensive and uh, everyone is looking for alternative. The talk of clean energy as an alternative on the one hand, and the search for cheaper source of energy on the other hand. Well, we have joining us in the studio to talk about this, uh, Mr. Ladak Latiboso, he's the president, associate of liquefied petroleum gas marketers in Nigeria and uh, he's here in the studio. Good morning Mr. Latimer, so thank you for your time. Good morning, thank you for having me. Yeah, so congratulations. You now have a, a Minister of State that f his focus is on gas. I guess that makes your association and your members uh, excited. Yeah, it's good for the country. Uh, it's a good, it's an welcome development. Though it's not the first time we are having a minister designated for gas and energy. We had similar thing during the era of uh, late President Umaru Jaradwa. And uh, this one is also a welcome development. It shows the concern and the kind of belief the President, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has in gas mm. as a way of solving the Nigerian problem. Mm. You know, so, so do you think gas problem. can solve the Nigerian's problem? How do you expect the President to act? Yeah, currently now, one of the challenges Nigeria is facing is about cash flow. We are heavily in debt to the other nations of the world. We have a lot of aspirations where we want to go in terms of creating employment, infrastructure development, all this could be done by having resources without going to borrow. We have huge development of gas in this country, very huge. We are about ninth in the whole world, but the very part of it is being tapped. So and it's an aspect where we can make a lot of revenue. And I think that's the vision of the president by saying, let me have a minister who will be focusing on exploration of all this gas, turning the gas, and all the investment we are doing on pipeline will not be meaningful by the time you are able to generate huge resources that can be transformed into infrastructure development for the country. Mm. I think that's the vision of the president, if I guess right. <laughs> <laughs> you should. You are in the industry, so I mean, we should get information from you now. Uh, just to clarify, mm -hmm. there are different types of gas. Yes. There's a natural gas, liquefied natural gas. You are for the petroleum. Uh, what is used for what? You know, um, we're now talking of alternative for petrol, mm -hmm. you know, for cars. We have, of course, our cooking gas. Mm -hmm. We have the one that we could use to generate electricity, yes. which some people are already, is it one and the same? We say we are rich in gas. We know there's need to process it just as we do crude and all of that. Help us to understand the connection. Okay, and we do to the best of my ability as a businessman, not as a chemist. <laughs> uh, gas and a ferrous form. We are in this room because there's gas here. We are able to breathe in oxygen. But when I talk of natural gas, we are talking of natural gas that actually being used to transform some ferrous use. All gases are in the family of natural gas. The chemists, we call it butane family. We have the butane, methane, and all those kind of um, chemical jargons. But the most relevant is that the one that is used domestically, the one that is used for industry. When you are talking of domestic use gas, they are talking of LPG liquidified petroleum gas. That's the one it's using for cooking, that's commonly called cooking gas. The industrial gas are numerous. We have the methane, we have the propane, we have the nitrogen and several. They are, they are using for various types. You can imagine all this visiting to the moon. There's something propelled to them. Their the gas are in for a lot of gas. Manufacturing of uh, weapons and so many things. You need gas and the kind of, you see, energy, that's the major focus. The energy you need, thermal energy. We have a lot of um, generating plants in Nigeria today that relies on gas. And that's where we have CNG. CNG is a special type of gas because of the pressure the high pressure nature of so, gas. So, so, I mean, <laughs> so we don't get to academic, you know. Um, we talk about gas flaring in Nigeria. Right. Do we have the gas 
to use for this thing? Is it just the processing, you know, to make it petroleum, to keep it natural for energy or for uh, cars and generators? Is, is that where the difference is? Do we have it in Nigeria? We have gas in our border, but the problem we have is the exploration rate is very low, a bit smartly low. Is it exploration or is it the processing? Both exploration and processing are interwoven. Okay. Because you can't, you, you explore and you process to come to the native form. So if you explore and you don't process, it can't be useful. So we have abundant deposit of gas right in the soil and under sea. But when we explore and we process them, it comes to a usable form. And that's the challenge and what is the opportunity everybody has seen. All Nigerians are aware that we have huge deposit of gas, which we can make more money than what we've made from petroleum, the crude oil. From crude oil. Before you get to where crude oil is under the soil, you meet gas on the way. What do we do? We fly it away because we don't have infrastructure to convert it into a usable form. And this thing we are flying away is billions of dollars that we are burning. And everybody has come to see that, no, you don't need to burn this. Conserve it into where it could turn to cash. And that is the focus of having a ministry will be dedicated to this, tapping the opportunity that we have in transforming this deposit into raw cash that will help us to offset our debts, mm. help us to source money to the infrastructure development and all the rest. But importantly, we must talk about domestic need. And that is where it is important to call attention of the new minister to hit. Yes, we have gas. Our focus is to generate revenue, but we must not forget to develop domestic need. Mm. Otherwise, we come back to the problem we are having with the petroleum, the crude oil, mm. where we just explain it and sell it. Very soon now, the pipelines are laid. We'll be selling gas to Europe and other developed world where they actually need it but if we neglect domestic need we run into another problem yeah so so um uh, and thank you for the correction earlier that we've had a uh, minister of uh, gas before now if you could uh, um, compare or maybe get some lessons you know from that former um, minister, you know, for this Mr. Ikerike now who's, who's back, who's here mm -hmm. as the Minister of Gas, where would you say he should start from? What area should he, should he order? Or are the challenges different when you compare that terrain and now? Yeah, it would be very unfair to do any comparison now. The first time we had the Minister for Gas, that administration was short-lived because of the sickness of the President then and the eventual death of the President. So it's very unfair. There are a lot of challenges they have now. This time around, I pray this regime will not be short-lived, and God will give them the hold without to see Nigeria through. It's really, in a long time now, we can now be comparing. But in terms of focus and expectation, you can be talking what are the expectation before the new regime. Now, the expectation is high, awareness is high, all Nigerians are up, I mean, are gotten to be aware now. And that's why we are discussing here. Years back, it's never been a point of discussion. What we discuss about crude oil, crude oil. But now people realize we need gas. So how do we use gas to meet thermal energy, to produce electricity for us? How do we meet gas to make sure that we are able to generate revenue? How do we sh meet the short supply? Because in the country today, we have short supply of gas, particularly the liquidified petroleum gas, which is commonly used. How our usage level is abysmally low when we compare to other countries of the world. Currently now, we consume average about um, 900 to less than that, 1 million um, tons per year, which is ridiculously low when we look at our population. Why is it low? So where do you think the minister, it's a whole lot. It's a lot. And uh, the minister of economy yesterday, Mr. Waledun, had said that we're not going borrowing. You exactly. also said it. I think you've yes, already mentioned. Yes, you don't mentioned. need to go borrow. So, but I would notice things are infrastructural issue that needed a huge mm -hmm. funding. So where does that leave the minister of state for gas? Where can he start from? Okay. Where we start from, if we start from the mandate given by his principal. It's just like a football match. When you watch match at home, you don't know the mandate given by the coach at the dressing well, room. But shouldn't the mandates of the principal, which is the president, yes. be the needs of Nigerians? Exactly. That's now what is so the what do we what need? Is what is the need of Nigerians from exactly. the president? The need of Nigerians from the president is what will drive his own work. He can't go outside the mandate given by his principal. So what are our needs And our Nigerians? need is, number one, we are all yearning for infrastructure development. We are yearning for affordability of this product. We produce gas, we have it, we must be able to access it. Nigeria, and 20% of Nigeria are accessible to LPG, cooking gas, which is ridiculously low. 
If you have a population of 230 million, if 90% of our population should embrace gas, then we are going to have a problem of supply. Already there's a supply issue. So that's the challenge for the minister now. Thinking as you are widening the usage of gas, making gas a decade of gas, you should be thinking of how to meet supplies. Both short term and a long term. Oh, and that is why investor has to be encouraged to come here for exploration. If we have two or three of NLNG type of industry in Nigeria, it goes a long way. NLNG is 30 years old. We have not gotten a replica of that, the same site, the same structure. And the question is, why is NLNG working? NLNG is working because the ownership structure help them. It's not only owned by federal government of Nigeria, it's owned by other investors. So we need similar big size plant like that, a platoon of it. That will help us in exploration, it will help us in revenue generation, it will help us in job creation, it will help us in power generation, and it solves a lot of problems. But and one one of the aim of your association mm -hmm. is to attract investment into the gas industry. So it's also your responsibility as an association. No, my association is an indigenous association. It's to encourage creating employment and ease distribution of gas. We ease distribution of gas, and that's what we saw. Make gas available, all news and cleaning of Nigeria. We've done that over the year. We've created awareness. Now the awareness we've created now, the problem we are having is shortage in supply and affordability. A lot of Nigeria cannot afford what price of gas is today. How many Nigerians can cook just a cup of beans for 800 Naira? So the problem and the challenge before the new minister is how to improve supply. You need to improve supply, on the, both on the short and the long run. How does it do it on the short run? Because if it does, gas is not what just go and quickly bring. You need to process it. If everybody has to embrace gas, with the little supply we have in Nigeria, and it's about 750 metric tons per annum, may not be enough for a population of 230. But how do you meet on the short run? Number one, meet with the producers. Let them know what they need in terms of infrastructure, how you can partner with them. And do a moral situation on them so that they won't make the price too high. Profiteering shouldn't be the order of the day, but meeting the need of people. And that is area where there's a kind of collaboration between its ministry and other ministries. So it's give and take. How we come and assist you in getting infrastructure development. You also need to assist Nigerians in making this available for them at a reasonable price without regulating it. But it's a situation, persuading them. I give you tax holiday. When I give you tax holiday, what government is expecting you that you should also pass it on to the last consumer in terms of making it available for them at a reasonable price. So if the price is too high, not all Nigerians can afford it. That's one challenge. Then the second challenge, other gases we have, how do we make it available to all the electric generating companies at an agreeable rate and a steady supply? So that there will be steady supply of power in Nigeria, we can generate a lot of power from energy. We are talking about cars converting into gas now through the use of CNG. I'm happy that government is partnering with NNPC to make that distribution and creating some of filling stations around the country. Yeah, that's a development. But when we are doing that, we must think about supply. Supply, supply is important. That is where we are with the petroleum products. We created awareness, but the supply is short there because the vineries were not working and we had not emphasizing that for years back. And that's why we are, so I don't want us to run the same problem, run into the same problem with gas. The minister has a task to make sure that he has an immediate, immediate plan and a long-term plan. A long-term plan where you need to encourage investors to come, how you can partner with them, having a very holistic and air-compassing structure that will make those implants and structure lasting and strong. Strong has NLNG. Because the ownership structure actually help NLNG to survive to today. They've been existing for 30 years. So we need similar structure and a big size of that to come into LPG more, exploit the gas, and transplant it to Naira to Nigeria, create employment, make it available, then meeting the supply gap. If the supply gap is not met, and we create awareness, we end up importing, and we are throwing away foreign exchange again. Do we lack skills, human resources? I don't want to say we lack skills. Nigerians are all over the world doing wonderfully well. Because we do have the natural resources. We have the natural resources. What we need, what we lack, is what we are getting to. We are getting to where we lack leadership. But thank God we are having direction now. We are having direction now. What we lack before is leadership. But now there's a lead direction. 
Somebody has shown interest that I believe in this. We can do. Let's give them a trial. Let's see what one they can do. I, w I wonder the if they are taking. I believe their solution is quite. I wonder familiar. if uh, because a lot of time the private sector does complain that there's really no, you don't have enough interaction between the public and the private sector, and even when you do, mm -hmm. the suggestions, the expert advice that comes from the industry players don't get implemented. No, it, it depends. It depends on who. Who is the pilot? Everybody has own star. The most important the star that work for you may not work for me. You can never run a public office without being a good listener. Because the ultimate goal is to satisfy the public. You need to listen to them. So any policy maker or policy uh, implementer to listen, be a good listener, know the direction to go. But however, at the same time, you cannot please everybody. So you need to have your focus and your agenda must driven you to get your results. So it should carry everybody along. The new minister needs to work with other ministries to be successful, especially Minister of Works, because he needs to entice players with infrastructure. And you know, you will not go and construct road. It's Minister for Gas. But minister he needs Minister of Works. He needs the presidential backing. Had the feeling, okay, can you see this? Let's get this. And when you talk about industrial development, Minister of Industrial and Commerce, because investors come in, they need good environment, they need a lot of economy to come in, they need assurance. The justice and the judiciary also have, so it's all encompassing. Yeah, well, that's why, that's why we have, a thing we now have a coordinating exactly, of exactly, exactly. So we hope that Mr. Wale will be able exactly. to, you know, and, and you know, that, I think, uh, I think these team are very, they are promising. I can see the bundle of talent within them. If Nigerians will allow them, um, we, I think we are going to I'm sure we Nigerians will allow them. Nigerians yeah, yeah, cannot yeah, stop yeah, the yeah, 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 I think we are. Just, we are just, for, just a, a sentence before yeah. we go. You, your association, warned us of a hike in cooking gas. Yeah. I'm a woman. I mean, so I buy cooking gas. It's my friend. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it, is, it is a big deal for me. You know, but even the other time when we learned that cooking gas was going to drop mm -hmm. to 4,000, I didn't see it. And now you have told us again. I'm sure it's already up by now. Yeah, it's up. Sorry about that, but it's the truth that has to be told. If that time we did not call attention of Nigeria to the price is going to how go up, they will suddenly get to the plant and the price will go up and they started fighting people. That you people have started again. Knowing fully that it's not their fault. So we need to create that awareness. What we are praying for is stability. The exchange issue is still an issue there. And when we have a small gap in supply, then the people that are producing here are taking advantage of that. And before I go, there's another thing ministers have to work on. The situation where the gas in Nigeria are being denominated in foreign currency, it will never go well. It doesn't work well for the common man. If we have our templates in dollar, then we will we, be crying every now and then. Let what we produce here be and we work on a price template denominated in Naira. It will make life much more easier. We are still producing 750 metric tons. And it must reflect in the market that a lot is being produced in this Nigeria. Everything should not be priced as if they were being imported. And I think the minister needs to sit down and then talk to people for him to have good success on that area. All right, thank you so much for that. We do hope that the minister is listening and will implement this. Uh, the issue of FX obviously is not new. Uh, when we spoke to the blue economy the other time, the issue of FX also and local services and mm -hmm. goods being priced mm -hmm. in, in foreign currency also. Okay, well, thank you so much for You're your time uh, this morning. Mr. Ladak Polatabosun, President of Association of Liquefied Petroleum Gas Marketers thank in you. Nigeria. Thank you. Let's